Exploring the holy habit of fellowship, it's important to remember the richness of that word. In Greek, it's the wonderful word koinonia that speaks of a complete sharing of life. Sadly, so often in our churches, we've reduced fellowship to a bit of polite chit chat over a tepid cup of tea. But Luke, in his presentation of fellowship, encourages us to go much, much deeper and much wider with what fellowship is all about. Of all the holy habits, fellowship is the one that I find personally most challenging. A fellowship can be very invitational, so for example people are inviting people to film nights and bowling nights. We wanted to think of ways that we could bring uh, the church and those beyond the church together. So we decided once a month to put on a film and chat afternoon. Fellowship, after all, I think is about meeting God in one another. Um, and certainly in the film afternoons we've had here, we've seen glimpses of that, that divine spark in the conversations and the laughter and the tears we share together. I encourage you to try something like one of these film and chat afternoons and you may well see friendships flourish and uh, faith deepen across your church and beyond. That's with all of the habits, practice, practice, practice. How can we truly be one as Jesus prayed that we might be one. Two years ago, seven Syrian families arrived from the camp in Lebanon. They needed to be welcomed, they needed to be helped to integrate into the community, and of course the main need for them was to learn to speak English. Tears too, because of course sharing their own experiences of what they've been through is part of their gift to us. But there are other ways in which we can do this as well. For example, street pastors out on the streets in the middle of the night are forming community. So again, as with all the habits, we need to think broadly, imaginatively and creatively how this gift we treasure within the church could be offered without the church as well.